Buonasera, signore, buonasera. Come bello stare a Napoli e sognare. Quante volte ho sussurato, amore, ti amo. Buonasera, signore, kiss me good night. Buonasera, signore, kiss me good night. Hey, Charles, buonasera. Buonasera, Lena. What a great day. What a great day. It Good is actually you. a great day. It's a great day. It is, you know, and, and oddly, I'm up here in Monroe today and it's blue skies and it's in the 60s. And as I just told you, they had been on, below freezing for six days in a row. So today yeah. the roads are opening, things are returning back to normal. Uh, there's people are relieved. And, yeah. And- yeah, we certainly send out our good thoughts to everybody who, uh, you know, in surrounding areas who really suff- suffered from this. So. You know, we're lucky here in New Orleans. It's unbelievable because we, we had 12 hours below freezing. They had 142 hours below freezing in Monroe. And I can appreciate what the situation Texas is in. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully now the roads or the, the snow will melt and trucks will be moving with goods and things yeah. that they need to, to foodstuffs and they'll be able to get their utilities back on and uh, get back to, to normal as soon as possible. Yeah, crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> Well, here's something really great. We had we were both on this amazing um, Zoom call that was organized by Basil Russo, and it was uh, presidents of Italian American organizations all over from all over. Do you do you have any idea how many people were on the call? There were 349 people on the call, and we also got to recognize that although uh, Basil ran the call and he put it together and his staff did a great job. That idea goes back to Joe Maselli in the 70s. And Frank, about three months ago, started working on that at the Italian Renaissance Center and the Italian Cultural Center. He had his staff start calling to get the email addresses of the heads of a, of a thousand Italian organizations. You know, Frank must have been so excited to see this actually finally happen. He is. He's also, you know, the, the, the whole team there did a great job. And it's great. I, I'm thrilled. And I'm thinking as I was having lunch with him earlier in the week, you know, like how neat it was that out of New Orleans, this thing became to fruition, that it was really Frank that said, OK, I'm ready to take this on because, you know, he did a great job with renovating the place. Oh, and yeah. You can see it behind me, you know, a year prior, they did the outside. Yeah. And then last year, two years ago, they did the inside. So it's in great shape. And now we're starting to build this coalition so that people can move forward on Italian issues. And we got a lot. Plus, we have to start building for the younger generation. I think, you know, one good thing that's come out of this pandemic is this Zoom technology that we're all using right now, which I love what we're, what you and I are doing, Charles. And with this show, we're, we're doing it, um, helping in another way to unite Italian Americans and anyone interested in Italian heritage and culture and entertainment. But, you know, to be able to have all of those people together on a on a call like that and see everyone's faces and the italian club hawaii was on the call i mean how neat is that yeah. you know you're, you're sitting on a call with 350 people and yeah yeah i mean it's just amazing the places where you wonder like well how many italians are really in boise idaho you yeah. know but they're there yeah so <laughs> if you would like to participate um and join one of the they have six groups uh, that they mentioned on the call, just go to Italian America Online. We'll post the link below. It's wonderful. And so, Charles, also tell us how to join uh, Louisiana organizations. Sure. SicilyJournal.com is a blog that I've created that writes about our organizations that we have about 20 of them in the state. And there's a tab there that says join the order of the Italian Sons and Daughters of America. So you can click on that. It takes you to their page. And we have two lodges. One for basically Alexandria in North Louisiana and one for Alexandria South uh, Louisiana. And later we might have three or four lodges, but we, we started with two. We have a roughly 60 members in Louisiana that belong to the order of the ISDA. It's $25 a year. And one of the clubs next month, we'll be talking later in the show is St. Expedite. And they're going to be helping with the St. Joseph Jazz in Ascension Parish. So that's where most of those members are located. Great. Also tell us how, um, everyone can get more information on the St. Joseph Jazz event. Where do they go for that? Uh, well, they can go to that right now. Is uh, We'll go to sicilyjournal.com. And we also have our, our Facebook page 
which is American Italians of the South and West. And we have a lot of information there. There's the event. You can click that you're coming. Yesterday, I was at the site. There's a great stage. Probably takes over two acres with grass, so people can spread out for COVID. Uh, I think we, we have the Muffaladas coming. We have the Santo Brothers, who were the first to record in stereo out of New Orleans, jazz. And, and their, their a tribute band is going to be playing. It's a six-piece band. Wonderful. And, and it will be properly socially distanced. Absolutely. That's why we have over two acres of land. Yeah. Thomas House is 37 acres. Yes. So we wonderful. really have a lot of land to, to be distanced. <laughs> That's fantastic, Charles. Yeah. All right, Charles. So check it out. My background, I know your background, but my background today, which I love pink. So I saw this and I was, I thought it was, I love the pink flowers. <laughs> I love the blue water, Lena. <laughs> yes. It's um, La Madalena on the Northeast coast of Sardinia. And it's one of travel and leisure's 10 secret islands in Italy that have all the beauty and none of the tourists. They have Spiaggia Rosa, which is a pink beach. And I went, oh my God, a pink beach. <laughs> That's my kind of place. So the brilliant color of the Spiaggia Rosa comes from a concoction of crushed fossils, crystals, coral, and dead marine creatures, which blend together to tint the sand with a rosy blush. It's so beautiful. Wow, that is fabulous. Yeah. That is beautiful. What so Charles, tell us a little bit about the statue you're working on. So, you know, Franco Alessandrini, he lives in New Orleans. He is known for putting the, the sculpture of Pope John Paul II in front of the cathedral. And in the 80s, he put together the Monument to the Immigrant, which is a beautiful, large sculpture. Yes. And he is worldwide. I mean, he, he spends some of his time in Italy, some of his time in New Orleans. His artwork is throughout the world. And he paints like you wouldn't believe, like a, almost an impressionist, modernist fusion is the way he paints. So he's a great artist, fell in love with New Orleans, stayed here and, and splits his time. He's designed this beautiful sculpture, which is two men cutting sugar cane. And as we know, in the 1880s, Sicilians were recruited to come cut sugar cane. And roughly about 60,000 were. So Louisiana was expanding its production. The Sicilians were out there working the field. We feel that this is a great tribute at this fabulous place so that we can, our ancestors will be known and, and appreciated for what they did. That's we have awesome. to start raising the money. It's going to yeah. need about $250,000. It's out of marble, but it'd be protected. And it's a, it's a great tribute to our ancestors. That's wonderful, Charles. Um, where will the statue be? towards a pathway into Homer's house and their gardens. So it's in a row, it'll be surrounded by roses. They have beautiful art throughout this, the gardens there. It's, and it's close to a, a Japanese tea garden and, and, and some waterfalls. So, you know, we think about Tivoli Gardens, this, this place looks like Tivoli Gardens. That's beautiful. So it will be on the, prop, on the Homer's house property. It, it'll be, I think, technically on the museum property. Oh, the it, museum. But they, they join each other. So, yeah. Go two feet is probably on Homer's house. <laughs> That's okay. fantastic, Charles. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. It's it's a really a thrill to put this together because I, I believe my ancestors were working on a plantation not too far from there in Morganza. Wow. And to bring this in, you know, we have so many Sicilians that are in the area because of those plantations from 1880s to 1930, really, they were working there. So, and there's a lot of great people that came off the plantations, heavyweight boxers, musicians, just so much came out of that that opportunity. Wonderful way to uh, pay tribute to them and honor them. Fantastic. Yep. Yes. All right, Charles, I have a check this out today. Okay. Uh, I w saw in my Instagram feed this wonderful shop called Bella Luck Charms, and I checked out their website, and their mission is to bring high-quality, unique Italian good luck charms and jewelry to the world to inspire women to live a blessed and charmed life. Our chains and charms are sourced mainly from Catania, Sicily, and the surrounding areas in Southern Italy. We give exceptional customer service and ship worldwide. Our team is passionate about everything Italian, the cornicello and jewelry, of course. So the cornicello, which I'm wearing, I'm wearing mine today. Beautiful. With my Italian coin, Dolce and Gabbana charms. <laughs> <laughs> but the cornicello, the cornetto, or corno, as some Italians say, is a lucky charm to protect against the evil eye. There is evidence that the cornicello goes back thousands of years to Roman times 
with the red horn symbols found in Pompeii and Rome. Today, the red horn charm is a symbol of hope and good luck. It is said to repel against the malocchio. How do you say that, Charles? I think you did better than I could do it. I've, I've heard <laughs> Malloy, the Maloiks. I've heard it said like that. <laughs> Malocchio, the evil eye. And I'm still thinking about the evil eye part. So I, yeah. I think I had somebody that used to give me that a lot. Yeah. Ah, and it's to promote good fortune. In addition to jewelry, you can also find the Cornicello charm hanging in people's houses, behind the doorways or outside a window. In Italy, it's often in its statement red. However, with the rise of good luck charm jewelry in Italy, Greece, and France, you can now find young girls wearing cornos in pink, white, and baby blue. So if you'd like to check out their beautiful jewelry, it's bellalucktcharms.com. Beautiful idea. And, and you know, we should have some of them March 20th at the festival. Yeah, I wanted to do a show and tell. I have a couple of... Uh, I have a giant one and a little one on these little keychains that I got at the National Italian American Foundation Gala when you and I went. Um, I, someone gave me a, a whole bunch of these, and I would love right now to give away a couple of these. So I have two to give away. So if you send me an email, the first two emails I get saying you'd love to have one, I'll send you one. So guess what, Charles? It's time for Charles Celebrates Culture. I love this. <laughs> hey. So today, we're going to talk about Frank Maselli and the Piazza. And, and Frank, uh, the Piazza opened up right at the World's Fair. That was a vision of Joe Maselli in the 1984. It is a fabulous place. There have been events there for now going on 40 years. It, and Frank has got a great opera, which uh, I think in, in jazz, you perform there in Christmas shows that he does, and he packs the place. I mean, so the background... The backdrop is like you're in a piazza in Italy. I mean, it's just amazing to see people show up. Many bring their own chairs. He's got a few there, but it's just a, a really neat scene. And then he took and renovated the museum. I mean, his dad had done a nice job, but today with technology, he's got video in there. You, know, you can actually go press, type in the city, your, uh, your last name, and it'll tell you what city that group is from in Sicily. Frank, you've been doing so much in the last uh, three years, but I know it goes back further, but Tell us what's going on with the Let's go with the basic things, okay? We teach Italian language. We teach about 300 people a year. We sponsor trips to Italy, and, uh, and just as a little added attraction, when you sign up for a trip, we give you, I think, up to four free Italian lessons. I'd say once or twice a month, we have a lecture, a movie. You know, all Italian, Italian-American related. And you, you also do, the, in January, and your dad started this, the, the sports banquet. I think this is our 33rd coming up in January. It's the Louisiana American-Italian Sports Hall of Fame Gala. Because we have a Louisiana American-Italian Sports Hall of Fame upstairs, uh, where we've already inducted like 100 Italian-Americans from around Louisiana. We have a nice museum a narrative museum where it tells you a story of the Italian immigrants, why they left Sicily, you know, what was going on in Sicily, why they left, how they got here, when they got here, what did they do, where did they go, and then on and on, and what are they doing now. I think so, most people don't realize the influence of Italians in jazz. Of course, we're highlighting Louis Prima and Nick LaRocca, who are our two most famous, say, Italian-American jazz musicians. But on this wall here, we have a list of 250 Italian-American musicians going back to the 1800s. Somebody wants to find you guys. What's the website? AmericanItalianCulturalCenter.com and we're located at 537 South Peter Street. Frank, I want to thank you for being on the show. Thanks for and, coming uh, by, Charles. So it's, it's computerized. It's got Mother Cabrini. It's got the pasta factories. Um, it's got the festas of St. Joseph, the sports figures, uh, the, the other trials and tribulations, uh, the World War II, the Virgilians, which was the first Italian Mardi Gras crew. Uh, when we couldn't get in the regular ones, we started our own. And it's got a little stuff there about the lynchings as well. So it tells the whole history of, of a family getting off the boat and you walk through this serpentine style museum 
and you learn everything. It's just fabulous. It is fabulous. And I got to see it while it was still in progress. And right when you walk in and you see, I guess, mannequins or, or yeah, like a mannequin with the clothing of the, you know, representing the um, immigrants with their suitcases. And I just got so emotional when I, right away when I saw that, because you think about our ancestors, our family members that, that came here wanting a better life. And then you walk through and there's so much cool stuff. The, he had like a old pasta machine making machine and, and a Sicilian cart that beautifully painted. And uh, those were a couple of things that were in there at the time. And I was just, uh, I can't wait to really go and see it. He's got great artifacts and it just showed the resilience. Many of them started with that cart and then as, as, that they turn the cart into a grocery store and that, that into a chain of grocery stores. So we, we have, you can trace those carts and where the great grandkids today are what they're doing. Great story. And the pasta machines, they started the Italian, the Sicilians were bringing in pasta and America loved it. And then they put a tariff on the pasta because they, they got jealous of what we were doing. Uh. So we got innovative. We opened up 11 pasta factories. So that press comes from one of those pasta factories. Once they said, Hey, we're going to put a tariff on pasta. So the wow. innovation, the determination and the vision of, hey, today it's a cart and tomorrow it's going to be a chain of grocery stores. Unbelievable. The services that he provides there, dual citizenship, tours, Italian language classes. There's a lot more going on there, genealogy. So it's worth going down there just to learn everything else besides the events, besides the museum. If you're going to be doing something on your own, go check it out. It's just absolutely, Frank Maselli is amazing what he is doing to continue the legacy of his father and yeah. for for the city of new orleans and for our heritage here he should just bravo frank oh, Maselli. Yeah. you know we love you so much <laughs> we do our news spent five years touring louisiana we've interviewed countless numbers of people the people that make it happen that put on mardi gras the chefs the artists the backbone of louisiana we've taken those interviews and made a show called celebrating culture but we've also taken those interviews and put them in a tour app New Orleans Insider Tours. To download the apps, all you have to do is point your phone at the flow code in the camera mode. Once you have the app downloaded, you'll have access to putting together the best game plan to experience in Louisiana. You can start with Little Palermo, which is 50 points of interest on the Italian community, and then go to Statue Stories and Spirits, over 150 stops in the French Quarter and CBD. Where to dine in New Orleans, what rooftop bars give you the best view, how to see the Gulf of Mexico from the coastal towns, driving up to the Bonnie and Clyde Museum near Shreveport, or up to Vicksburg. New Orleans and Louisiana are must-see for everyone, and there's so much to see. So we hope you enjoy it, and as we say here, let the good times roll. Okay, Charles, it's time for our La Musica featured artist today, and today we are featuring my, my good friend Frankie Shinta. Frankie is an incredibly talented musician, comedian, singer, and entertainer. He's originally from Buffalo, New York, and he first appeared on national TV as a child prodigy. And he plays every string and percussion instrument under the sun. Even more amazing, Frankie has never looked at a piece of sheet music in his life. <laughs> He's also a master impersonator with spot on impressions of some of the most iconic entertainers that ever performed, including Frank Sinatra, George Burns, Ray Charles, Dean Martin, and more. And I, you know, you can't just, I couldn't just put one, a video of him performing one song or something because he plays so many instruments. So I put together this wonderful little movie featuring all of Frankie's talents and I hope you enjoy this. Wonderful, Lena, wonderful. Hey, everybody, let's have some fun. You only live once, and when you're dead, you're down. Let a good time go. But when it came to singers, even as a kid, I knew there was only one. One man, one voice. And when I would put on my uncle's hat, I wasn't going to sing like Frank Sinatra. I wanted to be Frank Sinatra. My kind of town, 
Chicago is my kind of town. Chicago is one town that won't leave me down. It's mine. All of it is mine. My kind of town. Chicago, my kind of town. Chicago. Appalachia River by the Oma, Ron Lakes River and the Noonday Sun. Blue skies up above everyone, sing love. Appalachia River with me, that's it. You people are wonderful, thank you. And to hear laughter when you're an entertainer is a wonderful thing. You know, my friends, Gracie and I made people laugh forever. Why? Because we need to laugh. Without it, we would wither away and die. Don't you agree? Everybody. Love somebody, somehow. Everybody falls in love somehow. Oh, like a fellow once said, ain't that a kick in the head? Ain't that a kick in the head? One of the songs that touched my heart as a little boy was a waltz, a mazurka. The name of it was Sparanza Perduta, which translated for my Jewish friends means it really itches, but I can't reach it. No.
I get choked up every time I I, I hear hear him play and see him play. I have to I have to agree, Lena. And you know, with people he did the the uh, tributes to of Sinatra, Martin, and so many others. He is what a talent! What he, a talent! Absolutely incredible, and he's a wonderful guy. You know, I credited him him on my Prima La Familia album because he helped me with Oh Marie. Uh, that that was beautiful. Yes, that is a great <laughs> tribute there as well. Yes, yeah. I mean. He, that is, what, what a talent. I mean, just unbelievable. And you're right. It, it really cuts to the heart when you listen to his music. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So he's currently doing um, Live with Frankie Shinta on uh, Facebook. It's every Saturday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can also follow him on Facebook and YouTube and go to FrankieShinta.com to get more information about Frankie. And grazie, Frankie. <laughs> Grazie, yes. Yes. Yeah. Keep Prego. it going, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed the show today, Charles. I mean, I love it. And the talent that's coming in to be part of this is just really awesome, the, the connection. So it's just great to educate people and, and ourselves, to educate ourselves on what we, our culture. So thank you for this concept. It's, it's great. Thank you, Charles, as well, for all that you do for our community and our heritage and, and our culture. You're an, you're amazing, Charles. I'm just having fun. <laughs> we are, we're just having yeah. fun. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you everybody so much for watching. We hope you're enjoying the show and we will see you next week. Thank you again. Ciao, 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 ciao. <laughs> ciao, 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 ciao. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> Buonasera, signore, kiss me goodnight. Hi, I'm Lena Prima. My music is available on Amazon and iTunes, also BasinStreetRecords.com and LenaPrima.com. Please like my Facebook page, Lena Prima Official, and follow me on Instagram at Lena Prima. I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel, Lena Prima. Thank you so much. Ciao. Our New Orleans Insider Tour app features a Statue Stories and Spirits Tour. It's a great way to learn about New Orleans. There are over 150 markers that all have a little story. Here, we're at the market of Edward Wisner, a man who was told to come to Louisiana to improve his health. He invented a pump and drained over 30,000 acres of land. The royalties of gas and oil now go to New Orleans, Tulane, LSU, and the Salvation Army. We have a lot of great stories in our app that'll add to your enjoyment and appreciation of New Orleans. It's simple to use with GPS, text, photos, and video. Hi, I'm Lena Prima. Please watch Buena Sera, Louisiana. Food, culture, history, arts and entertainment, everything Italian-American. You can find episodes on my YouTube channel, Lena Prima, also on our Facebook page, at Buena Sera, Louisiana. It's also available on my website, lenaprima.com. Grazie. Ciao.